How's it going? Ten little hot dog cuties. Ben here, and today is my four month, four month anniversary of being on testosterone. How do I sound? How do I look? It feels great, guys. And this is a journey, and I'm so 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 happy to share it with you. So I just wanted to give you guys a little update before I actually get to the main main topic of our video, and that is. I am personally absolutely mortified every time I put on my white coat. And I'm going to be telling you guys why it has to do with gender dysphoria. And before I even get started with explaining to you why I'm so mortified to put on my white coat, I want to let you guys know that all of this is entirely, I do not put blame on anyone for this. It's entirely my own misunderstanding that caused me to have this dysphoria about putting on my white coat and also me not understanding, interpreting what was happening during the day where I ordered my white coat. And for those of you who are new to my channel, hi, my name is Ben. I'm a first year medical student and I was assigned female at birth, but now I identify as male. So that's why I'm under hormone replacement therapy. It's been a process, but it's getting better and better every month. So uh, let's talk about my white coat, shall we? I'm not going to show my specific white coat because of the fact that it has my full legal name and also my school affili affiliation on it. So I'm not going to show the uh, exact white coat that I have, but I will show you a small pre-rendering of what it's supposed to look like right here. So what is wrong with my white coat? Okay, let's go back to the very first day of medical school for me, my orientation day. So during orientation, one, I was sleep deprived. Deprived, I was only living on two hours of sleep because I was that excited for my first day of orientation at medical school. And two, I had no idea that they would be doing our white coat fitting during our orientation day. That, that, that little communication was not not given to me or I may have missed it on an email or anything like that. I just did not know it was going to happen. I did not know how thorough it was going to be. So as soon as I walk into the door, they're like, okay, guys, we're going to do your white coat fitting. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so not prepared for this. So here I am completely in shock that I'm getting fitted for my white coat and I'm rushed to the room where I have to get fitted. And what do you know? There's already about 30 students there getting their white coats fitted and it was just such such a busy busy mess because everyone was trying to get their fittings right everything and I'm the type of person who hates absolutely hates those kinds of environments where like I'm not able to think clearly I'm being constantly rushed so my goal was to go in and out like I was thinking that if I go in I put on something and it fits me right I'm gonna leave and get out Another thing about that entire room full of 30 people, there was only one mirror. One mirror to look at yourself. And um, people were fighting for that mirror to see themselves. And I was like, I don't want to have to deal with any of that situation. So I'm just going to put on a white coat. If it, if it feels right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take it off and I'm going to order that one, right? So I pick one off the rack. It's a size extra small. And I put it on. It feels great. It feels like it fits. Uh, I'm really not able to see myself completely clearly at all. And uh, I take it off and I'm like, okay, this is it. This seems like the right white coat for me. So I go over to the woman who has the order form sheets on her. And uh, she gives me the sheet. And I start filling out the sheet, right? I start filling it out, filling it out. And then I go to the faded question. The question says gender M F and that's where I have my oopsie moment so I stare at this I, I kid you not guys I stare at this question for a solid five minutes not knowing not knowing what that implies because it was my understanding that all white coats are unisex in in fitting like there's no difference between male and female white coats Keep in mind, guys, that I have very, I had very little exposure to the field of medicine before getting accepted into medical school because of the fact that none of my family, none of my friends, I came from a very, very underserved community, none of them was in medicine. So 
it was my assumption that all white coats are the same. They're fitted the same. Male and female white coats are the same. It's unisex, kind of like those Gildan t-shirts you buy for school or something. So I was thinking what they would do with that information that I put down as my gender um, is that they would put like Mr. or Mrs. on the white coat because a lot of medical schools actually do that, right? So I, I, I always play it safe, guys. Um, when, whenever a legal form asks me for my gender, I put the legal gender on my license because I don't want any issues or anything like that. Once I get my license changed, of course, I'm going to be putting my legal gender on official forms after that. But just to be safe, I always put my legal gender. So I did, I did check my sex assigned at birth on there, and I approached the woman uh, who gave me the form, and I was like, excuse me, uh, I just want to be really quick. Uh, clear with you I if there's a missus in front of my name I do not want that I don't want any qualifiers before my name that genders me and she was like oh honey don't worry about that um, we don't even do that here we put your full name we put what school you're going to and that's it so I was like okay all right we're good that ge that gender little sign thing was only for I guess legal purposes and there's nothing of it absolutely nothing and so uh, I put my size, I put everything down, and I give it to her, and I think we're good. And this happened in the beginning of midsummer. Midsummer. It happened during that time where I got fitted for it. So a couple of months go by, and it's time for our ordered white shirt, white white shirts, white coats to come in. So I'm super excited. Everybody is super excited in my class to get their white coats, to put it on, to have their name on it, to have their school emblem on it, and everybody's just super, super, super excited. And I'm super excited too. I'm I'm super happy to go get my white coat. So I I go in there. I wait in line. I wait in line for a solid 15 minutes because everybody's so excited to get their white coat. They just can't help themselves and rush to the line. And I wait 15 minutes. I get my white coat. I'm so excited. I take it out, I unravel it, and immediately my heart drops. It drops so much and I became so disappointed because I got a female design white coat. After, after that realization, guys, I immediately shut down. I was incredibly, incredibly sad. I, I just didn't know what to do because I knew, I knew I knew that this white coat that I got, that was it. That was gonna be my white coat for the next four years in medical school. And everybody around me was putting on their white coat with such excitement. And I was there mortified, not even wanting, not even desiring to put it on. And what made it worse is that a lot of faculty was coming and asking to see my white coat and they're asking me to put it on. and. I, I did put it on and I put it on with a smile because I'm not the kind of person to make other people's days uncomfortable because I'm uncomfortable. So I put it on. I did it for them. But on the inside, I just felt so, so, so terrible. Like, it, it kind of ruined that special moment for me. And I know I did it to myself. It was my misinterpretation. I should have been... I should have asked more questions, but I was so rushed during orientation day that I was I was even scared to ask questions because it seemed like a lot of the workers were getting really, really, really worked out by all the hecticity, hecticity, I don't know if that's even a word, <laughs> hecticity that was happening, um, hecticness that was happening on that day. So I, I went home and I was just really upset, guys. I just didn't know what to do so I just decided that I was gonna suck it up and I was going to just wear this female fitted white coat for the rest of my four years and that was not a good decision to make guys I've been wearing this white coat to all my preceptorships all my clinical ro not rotations my clinical settings um, that I'm required to attend with this white coat on and every single time guys it's it's been a struggle. <laughs> it's been a bit of a struggle. Because imagine, okay, 
not everybody, uh, 90, 99% of the world is not ch transgender, but imagine you being a, a male. Imagine you being born a male. A anyone watching this video, you are born male, you identify as male, and you are forced to wear a fitted coat that does not align with who you are. It's just mortifying. It's actually very mortifying. So I went on for three months wearing it, dreading every single day that I had to wear it. Every single day. I tried to make it less less feminine by like flaring or opening it up a little more so it doesn't look as curvy and also wearing a tie, wearing a uh, button-down shirt and I, I did my best and yeah in a lot of clinics I people didn't even notice but in a lot of other clinics they they were like so uh, what's with that fit you know and it's been it's been really rough so um, I coped with it I coped with it. I kept coping with it and I I hit an epiphany one day because someone asked me so why do you why are you putting yourself through this why not go out of your way to to not request it just ask ask for permission from the from the admissions committee from the committee that handles all the white court orders why don't why don't just try asking if they'd be willing to reorder this white coat for me and why don't you even offer to pay for the white coat because we did get our white coats for free and it's not ex not it's not cheap it's pretty expensive because we have to get everything embroidered and everything and custom made so uh, a lot of my friends my partner really encouraged me to just ask just ask the question and I'm the type of person who hates asking questions because I felt guilty I knew it was my fault and I didn't want to burden someone else because of it but after doing it for three months I was like I do this for three and a half more years and feel like terrible, terrible, terrible those three and a half years or I write a very kindly worded letter asking, asking to have it reordered and being able and being really clear that I'm willing to pay full price for a new one. And I did that guys. I. I wrote this letter, I put my heart out into that letter, there was no cattiness, there was no snarkiness, there was no blaming. I took full responsibility for my own mistake, for my own misunderstanding. And I sent that letter to the coordinator, the, pro uh, the program coordinator of the White Court orderings, and she reached out to me two days later, and <laughs> uh, she asked me to go come meet her in person. And I was like, oh my god, I'm in so much trouble, like, they probably hate me. Um, but I went up to her, <laughs> my heart was racing so bad, guys, it was racing so bad. And she was like, so you, you emailed me about the white coat, right? And I was like, uh, yes, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she was like, oh honey, 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 it's totally okay. I, I talked to the dean of, um, dean of admissions and the dean of medical education and they said to completely order you a new one and I was like what really and she's like and I was like do I have to do I have to pay for it and she's like no 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 they love you uh, they want you to feel accepted here it's totally fine like you you're gonna get a new one just um, you're gonna have to hold on for three and a half more weeks or maybe even up to five weeks to just hold on and we'll get you a new one so yeah I made another oopsie, I guess. So I could have completely, completely had a new and improved white coat with the right fitting weeks ago <laughs> or even months ago if I just had, if I just had the courage to ask that question. Because to be honest, guys, the more I think about it, it didn't hurt to ask and it, it even if they said no to me, even if they said no, I could have been proud of asking for something like that. So, in a couple of more weeks will be the last day that I'm completely mortified to put on my white coat. And I can't wait for the day that I can wear my white coat with pride, that I can wait, wear it with confidence, that I can wear it with all the love I have in the world for medicine. Because right now, <laughs> it's been a struggle. I am faring pretty well with it. I, I do my best, and my classmates tell me that 
you know, they, they don't see me any differently when I put that one on. And I love you guys. And I guess the lesson I want to kind of tell you guys, whether or not you are transgender, whether or not you're gender non-conforming or non-binary, even if you're cisgender, always, always fight for what's yours. If you feel like something is making you uncomfortable and you want to be uncomfortable, fight for it. I think everyone, regardless of what identity, what religion, what gender you are, if you fight for what makes you comfortable, you can get far in life and you can live a better life, you can live a happier life, and you don't have to take any criticism from anyone. I love you guys. I hope this video was entertaining for you. I hope you guys liked this story. Be sure to come back. Be sure to follow me on the social meets. Links are down below and also right here. Yeah, right here. This has been I Love You Guys. I'll see you next week. Much love to you guys. Much love.